All right, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to lesson two of unit three, area study three, Australia and the world economy. Last lesson, we looked at international transactions and how they impact Australia, as well as living standards. Today, we're gonna to be looking at lesson two, the balance of payments, which looks at the current account, as well as the capital and financial account and how they balance each other out. And then looking at the structural and cyclical causes that impact Australia's current account balance. So there's a lot to look at there. Um, a lot of how we look at the balance of payments is similar to how we look at aggregate demand in that we're going to look at factors and how they impact it and how they impact sub accounts within it and how they impact it overall. We're also going to talk about as we go through some of the reasons why Australia's balance of payments for the last few years has been in a surplus when historically it has been in a deficit. So our key knowledge today is all about the balance of payments and its components as well as cyclical and structural influences on Australia's current account balance. So our learning intention for this whole topic is to understand how global transactions impact living standards in Australia. And your success criteria today is to be able to describe the current account and its components, and to be able to explain cyclical and structural factors which impact the balance of payments. So what the balance of payments is, is it's an annual statistical record of the money value, both current and capital and financial transactions between Australia and the rest of the world. So this records credits, which Credits are all about money coming into Australia from overseas and debits, which is where Australians make payments to overseas. So we, all we care about with this is the amount of credits coming in versus debits going out. And the balance of these transactions is known as either a current account surplus or a current account deficit. So this is really important. So a surplus is all about when credits exceed debits and a deficit is all about when debits exceeds credits. And that is going to be something that you need to be able to calculate through simple math or talk about how something's going to make things more likely to be a surplus or more likely to be a deficit or increase or decrease the size of the surplus or deficit. So more recently, Australia has been recording current account surpluses. We were starting to trend back towards a deficit, but the strength of our commodities exports has been keeping our trade balance really positive and therefore keeping us within a current account surplus. So what actually is within the balance of payments or the current account. So when we look at the current account, there are four sub accounts that we look at within that current account and they are net goods. And net goods is all about export credits for goods sold overseas minus import debits. So basically all the physical goods that we export overseas versus all of the goods that we import in. Net services, which is the exact same thing, but about service credits. So if we have students coming in to study in Australia, that is an education export and therefore a service credit. If we are going overseas as tourists to Disneyland in California, that is a service import and therefore that is going to be a debit from net services. And what's really important when you talk about these accounts is if you get asked about a scenario, you talk about if it's going to impact credits or debits in which of these accounts. So if we talk about that tourism uh, um, example, if you go over to California as a tourist, anything you do over there is going to be a service debit as you are enjoying the service of tourism and you're importing it because you're bringing that experience back with you to Australia and leaving that money in California. So our third sub account is net primary incomes. Net primary incomes has been one of the um, largest parts of Australia's current account historically. And why that is, is because net primary incomes is the difference between income credits received from overseas versus the debits that we've paid abroad. And what is included within this is things like wages, salaries, uh, interest repayments, dividends on shares, etc. And so interest repayments on foreign debt is a massive reason why there is a significant amount of debits from net primary incomes. So if you think about Australia in general, as we'll get into later in this topic when we talk about net foreign debt, Australia has over a trillion dollars of net foreign debt, including both public debt and private debt. So this is the reason why net primary incomes is most often in a deficit or there are more debits than credits, because we have so many interest repayments going out on this massive amount of net foreign debt that we have. And this has been minimized recently by historic low interest rates over the last few years, as for a long time, we had a cash rate of 0.1, which meant that there was lower interest rates worldwide as well, which meant we're paying less interest on this foreign debt, but interest rates worldwide have begun to rise. And therefore these interest repayments on our foreign debt are going to start to creep up 
and therefore net primary incomes is going to start to have more and more debits coming out of it as we pay more and more interest repayments overseas on this foreign debt. So net primary incomes could be a good reason in 2023 why our current account moves back towards deficit or we have a reduced surplus. And then the last account, sub account, is net secondary incomes, which is all about one-way transactions with nothing gained in return. This is mainly foreign aid. So this is where we give something to another country with no expectation of anything in return. So there's mainly gonna be debits from there as we're mainly sending things overseas. So with all of these accounts, we take the credits, we minus the debits and add them all together. And these um, all added together equal the overall balance on current account. And that is going to be either a surplus if the debits outweigh, I mean, if the credits outweigh the debits or a deficit if the debits outweigh the credits. So either a surplus or deficit is what we care about there. And then on the other side of the balance of payments, we have the balance on capital account, which is mainly about the flow of human capital into or out of Australia. So it's mainly about migration. So this includes net capital transfers, net acquisition of non-produced non-financial assets. So the large part of this is capital transfers, which generally involves the net inflow of funds to Australia by permanent migrants. So someone coming to Australia to live permanently and bringing all of their assets with them, that is going to be a massive credit coming into Australia. Um, over the last few years, we've had more people leaving Australia than coming in. So we've actually had more debits going out of the capital account as people move overseas and take all of their assets with them. Also within the capital account, we've got net acquisition of non-produced, non-financial assets, which is all about the sale of copyrights, patents, franchises, and trademarks of a tangible nature. This has never ever come up before. And most often in capital account, you just talk about that migration and what that means for capital transfers. Then our other account on this side of the balance of payments is the financial account. The financial account is all about investment within a country. So there is net direct investment, which involves the purchase or expansion of companies um, and assets in Australia by foreigners, or our investment in businesses, companies, assets overseas. We've got net portfolio investment, which has to do with transactions into and out of Australia involving shares, debt, and securities. So if you're buying shares in America, that is going to be a debit going out. But if someone is buying shares in Australia, that is going to be a credit coming in. We have reserve assets, which is basically anything the RBA is holding, including foreign currencies, gold, uh, et cetera, that they are planning to use later. And then net errors and omissions, which exists solely to balance out the balance of payments. Because how the balance of payments looks is if we have the balance of payments up here, we have the current account on this side, and then we have over here, we've got the capital account and financial account, and they have to cancel each other out. So all of these things together have to equal zero. So that net errors and omissions helps to make that happen. So if the current account is, for example, positive 10, the other side has to equal negative 10 because they're going to zero out because they balance. They are always going to be perfectly in balance um, and they're always gonna balance out. Part of the reason why that is, is a lot of transactions on one side have a direct impact on the other. So for example, if there is net direct investment in a country, that's going to be credit coming in and there'll be debits going out in the um, current account as there'll be um, net primary income debits going out as we pay either dividends or share of those profits overseas as an income to those people. So now we're going to get into the structural impacts on the current account balance. So when you see the word structural, most often it is all about long-term aggregate supply side impacts on something. So these are all the long-term reasons why historically our current account balance has been in a deficit, but now how those things are improving and why that's leading us to be in a surplus currently. So some of the reasons why historically we've been in a current account deficit is that Australia is a relatively young country in the um, whole world. So with a small population relatively and a large quantity of natural resources, therefore to get the most out of our natural resources, we need constant investment to maximize our output but we don't have a lot of savings to use for investment. So we have to get that from overseas. So that savings investment in balance must then be filled with foreign funds. So these two points lead to massive debits in the form of interest repayments, like we were talking about earlier in net primary incomes. 
Another reason for us to be in a current account deficit historically is due to our low level of international competitiveness, due to our low efficiency and high production costs due to our high wage rates in Australia, because Australia has one of the highest minimum wages in the world. On the upside here is due to the impacts of rising interest rates and the impacts of COVID, people have been saving a lot more money in Australia. So through COVID, people saved significantly more than ever before. And therefore, currently, we are less reliant on foreign borrowing as we're able to dip into our own savings to invest. That may change as interest rates rise more and more, and we are more having to pay interest on our variable rate home loans, et cetera, and are gonna be worse off because of that. But in the short term, that has improved the structural aspects of our current account balance. Then lastly, we have cyclical um, components of the current account balance. Whenever you see the word cyclical, it's all about how fluctuations in aggregate demand, so like via the business cycle, impact the current account. So during periods of strong aggregate demand and economic growth, the current account deficit will actually begin to grow because the gap between investments and savings gets bigger. So we are going to owe more to overseas as we're saving less and we're having more investment that we're going to have to repay. And strong spending spills over into greater import spending. So as aggregate demand grows and grows, people get more of an income, they start importing more now that they have more of an income. So when aggregate demand is increasing, it usually tends to lead to a larger current account deficit or a smaller current account surplus. Then if aggregate demand is falling, people tend to start to save rather than um, investing, and that's gonna to lead to a smaller current account deficit. Also when aggregate demand is falling, people are gonna stop buying imports as they're focusing just on satisfying their needs, and therefore that is likely to either decrease the current account deficit or increase a current account surplus. And that is it for the balance of payments. This is a whole lot of information. It's gonna be very, very overwhelming until you start to put it into practice. One of the biggest things I recommend is when you look at current account based questions, it's very, very similar to your aggregate demand type structure. So whatever factor you get, describe that factor, talk about how it impacts the credits or debits in a sub account, and then how it impacts the um, current account overall. But if you have any questions at all about this part of the topic, leave a comment below or email me, shortatherunningeconomy.com. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you next time for our next video for lesson three. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.